Today's scripture is coming to us from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the, the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Please just take a moment of silence. Gracious God, now as I sit here to prepare to say something to somebody that will help them along this journey of life, I ask that you will completely reduce me in self, that you might increase, and that every word that proceeded from my mouth and from my heart would be acceptable to you because it would be coming from you and that somebody will receive and hear something that they need to help them along this journey. Father, 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 we thank you for loving us in spite of us. We thank you for continuing to pick us up. And we thank you for always blessing us. In your son's holy name, I do pray. Amen. Good morning, Beth Salem, YouTube congregation, and Zoom family this morning. Uh, whew, fatherhood. This is not a, it's not usually been a good day for me. But when Charlotte called yesterday, I could not say no. That's one thing I have a problem with, that little word, no. <laughs> but I came home and I started thinking and searching and looking and I, I just worked myself into a tendency. I said, okay, God, okay, let me sit down. Let me listen. Let me hear what you have to say. And he led me to this. Well, first I looked in my concordance. I said, let me see how many times I can find the word father. In, in, in back here and see what kind of scriptures it refer me to. And I looked at Father, and that was Father back there about 50 times. I said, well, wait a minute. I don't remember seeing this many scriptures on mothers. And I looked at Mother, and that was about 10. I said, okay, so who's the most important part of this family? Fathers. I am a daddy's girl. I'm not ashamed to say it. I talk about it all the time. I know I was my daddy's heartbeat. I know my daddy loved me. But you know what? I was blessed with two fathers that loved me. My earthly father, who I lost he was at an early age. I was in my late 20s. My father was 46 years old when God called him home on Thanksgiving. But I think God said, well, you know, you are such a handful. It's hard for us to control you being in separate places. So I need us to be together. So he called them home so that they could work together to keep me in line. But they left. He left others here to take their place. I got these brothers that think they're my daddy. I have uncles that acted like my daddy. I have cousins that treat me like I'm their daughter. And not even my sons try to be my father. When does fatherhood stop? I don't know. I'm, I'm just waiting to see what the grandsons are going to start doing. <laughs> but fatherhood is a special, special group of people. And this morning, I want to tell you about five special fathers that I have met in my time at Beth Salem. 
I'm not going to call any names with these stories. And I'm not, after I read this scripture said, you know, they, they were drinking of the Holy Spirit, a holy drink. And these fathers had to be drinking something to do the things that they did throughout the years that I have watched them. There's this one grandfather, when his grandchild was born and they started bringing her to church. Now her parents would bring her to church, especially her mama. But that child would not let anybody hold her but her granddaddy. And it was just confusing. Why won't she go to anybody but grandpa? But you could see that love. You could see the smile on that grandfather's face. You could see that sparkle in that granddaughter's eyes. And to this day, that grandfather still make these long trips to go see that granddaughter. She still has him wrapped around her finger. <laughs> then we had this father, never had a biological child, became a godfather to two young boys. Their lives were in such a shamble until this godfather came into their life. You could see the love he had for those boys, and you could see the love they had for him, the respect that he showed them, the way he treated them, the things he taught them. It was just obvious. That's their daddy. Might not be blood, but that's their daddy. Then we have this one father who has daughters. Come, here comes a young man that passed through his time here who was struggling with decisions on college football, on staying with football, even on staying in college. Now, this man had experience in, in dealing with his daughter. But for whatever he said, and however he said it to this young man, it changed his life. He started walking differently. He started talking differently. He finished college. He didn't go on into the pros for football, but he stayed with it throughout college. Then there's this father. These two fathers, I'm going to talk about these two fathers together because they both have a daughter. On yesterday, we had a yard sale. Everybody was sweaty and tired, and this daughter all of a sudden comes and asks me, Minister Gunn, you got a plastic bag? I need to go change clothes. I got to go to blank blank because uh, I'm going to have dinner with my daddy. I said, baby, Father's Day is tomorrow. She said, no, today. Mr. Gunn, do you have a plastic bag? I said, hold on, I'm going to get it for you. I had to get her that plastic bag because she had to go change clothes. She was not going out with her daddy in those blue jean shorts and that T-shirt that she had been sweating in out in that sun. She went inside and got cleaned up and got dressed up to go out to dinner with her daddy. And she was all smiles afterwards. This other daddy, has this door. He'll be at the food pantry working us like slaves. He be throwing stuff and doing stuff and he don't know what time it is, he don't know where he is. But there's a clock in his head and heart when it's time to pick that baby up from school. He stops. Gotta go get her. I'll be back. Now that's five different fathers and grandfathers that show love and they don't show that just that earthly love they have that godly love we have earthly fathers and then we have worldly fathers and then we have our spiritual fathers all fathers are born into the world we all are born into sin but then we are taught and led to live the spiritual life Give you a few examples. A worldly father sees the message of the cross as foolishness, where that spiritual father 
realizes the message of the cross is the power of God. All of these these, all these comparisons are coming out of 1 Corinthians. So when you get some time, sit down and read 1 Corinthians. This earthly father does not know God. The spiritual father demonstrates the power of God every day. The earthly father takes pride in his human knowledge his sports knowledge or how to, how to, you know, how to be out there on the street, how to do this and how to do that. But then that spiritual father knows the mind of Christ and knows that it doesn't take all the shooting, the killing, the drinking, the road rage. All it takes is prayer and meditation. That earthly father is puffed up. Oh, he get cleaned up, going to have a crease in them pants that will cut you if you touch it. <laughs> but then that godly father, he seeks meekness and humility. Yes, his clothes are going to be clean, and they're going to be on him neatly, but they don't have to be name brand. They don't have to be stiff starched. They don't have to have a whole lot of holes in them. <clears throat> that earthly father, he criticizes leadership. Find something wrong with all the leaders of the world. But then you go to that spiritual father and he submits to the spiritual leadership of Christ. No matter how hard the task may seem, he doesn't complain. He just follows directions. Then we like uh, the earthly father relies on the power of words. Oh, some of the words that come out of their mouths. Sometimes I have to remind uh, my son and, and, and one of my grandsons, I had to, oh, wait a minute. Remember who you are standing in front of. Remember who's in this conversation. Or even read something that they post on Facebook and I might send them a little message and say, hey, oh no, that's rep you represent me. Do not put that on Facebook. But then that spiritual father, he relies on the power of God and he will speak with gentleness, cleanliness, and sincerity. And then that earthly father, he takes pride in his personal accomplishment. Oh, I got a promotion on my job today. Oh, I bought me a new car today. Oh, I went out and bought me this, that. Oh, I turned it up last night. But then that spiritual father recognizes that God as source of that God is the source of everything. Even his just being able to sit on the porch and look at the sun go down. That was an accomplishment. That, that earthly father, he insists on his personal rights. I have a right to do this and I have a right to do that. You can't take away my rights. But then that spiritual father becomes a servant of all. Looking past the rights that he has but leaning on all the understanding that God has given him to righteousness. Okay, that earthly father, he is, uh, is always insensitive to others. It's all about me, I, me, I, those two personal pronouns. But then that heavenly father, he edifies others. He's always lifting up others, praising for any little thing they do, not just looking at what he has done. It's not about him. It's all about the father that's in him. That earthly father is insensitive to others. Mm -mm -mm, very. It's all about being them. All about just, 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 it's about me, God. It's about me. Okay. 
that earthly father is very arrogant and says things to hurt others. But that godly father seek the well-being of others. It's always there to offer a kind word, a gentle touch, even a strong hug if it need be. That earthly father is envious, has a lot of strife and division in his attitude, his way of doing things. Godly Father, he pursues unity. He wants everybody to love everybody. God made us all. He wants us to be one big happy family. That earthly father is full of malice. Mm. But that godly father, walks in the way of love. Love conquers all. That God, that worldly father is subject to fall and not just one time. Sometimes it takes many times of him falling before he gets the message. But that godly father he stands up under temptation, pressure, anguish, pain, whatever it takes to protect and love his family. That earthly father will be caught up in his own craftiness. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I tell mine, you, you, you too wise for your own good. Think they are smarter than anybody else. Nobody can outsmart them. But that godly father maintains self-control and discipline. And rather than explode, he'll go in a corner or go in another room and have a little talk with Jesus and ask him to take over. That godly father, that earthly father, has immature understanding, very immature sometimes. But that godly father has developed maturity. And he knows sometimes it's better to not speak, to just stand and listen, or sit and watch until the time is right. And that every action does not require you to make a comment. That earthly father will not last. Life is short. When you don't honor your mother and your father, when you don't honor God, life is short. It might not mean death. Life being short don't always mean death, but it means the, the value of your life, the wellness of your body. Sometimes God will let you linger around here for years and years and years. And that's not life. That's existing. But then that heavenly, that, that spiritual father, he develops the maturity. He, ha he maintains his self-control. And he, even though his life might be cut short, physically sometimes, <coughs> But the things that he did and said and the walk that he walked, the talk that he talked during that short period of time, it will last a lifetime with some young people. These five men that I talked to you about at Beth Salem, some of these children are as old as 30, maybe a little older. 
And these men have continued to pray and watch over them and minister to them. And no matter where they are now, no matter what their life involves now, these children or young adults know that there is a different way. And even though they try to do some of the things that their friends do, even though they try sometimes to kind of deviate from what they know is right and wrong, they are always drawn back to something that was said or done to them by that spiritual father. So fathers, no matter what category you fall under as a father, a father, a stepfather, a, a godfather, a, a grandfather, a brother father, whatever your father relationship is with the young people in your life, not just the young men, but these, the young women, Continue, continue to do what God has called you to do. Continue to be that role model. Continue to be that mentor in somebody's life. Continue to be drunk in that spirit, that wine that God gave us. I always talk to the women about that cloud of witnesses that we walk under. Well, fathers, today I'm here to tell you, you walk under a cloud also. You have a rock following you. Mm -hmm. We were not given that. But you as fathers were given a rock. And that rock is filled with wine, a holy wine, to lead you, to give you that thump that my, my, my play mama says she gets from that little glass of wine she needs to take every day. You get that little ump that you need from Jesus to keep you going. Don't let nobody turn you around. Walk the walk. Talk the talk. Be like Christ. The only time that we hear that Christ asked his father to do something different than what he was doing in his life was when he hang on the cross and he asked him to take away the bitter tree. Jesus never questioned God. He just followed. Fathers, don't second guess yourselves. Don't let others question your leadership or your fatherhood ability. Continue. Continue to be those fathers. Oh, yeah, I just named five this morning, but there are a lot of others. There are lots of fathers out there that are good fathers, fathers that want to do the right thing, fathers that are trying to do the right thing. But sometimes there's that little something that get in the way, and sometimes it's called the mother. Mother, you might need to step aside. And let the fathers be fathers. No matter whether they are in the house or out of the house. They can still be a father. There's... Okay, everybody can play daddy. But everybody can't be a father. Yes, you can find somebody to play daddy to, to your child. But let that father be a father. There's a difference. I hope that I made you curious enough or angry enough or even happy enough that you will look at the fathers in a different light. <coughs> Let that light that that father is shining on those children's lives or that child's life. Let that light shine. Let that father be that lighthouse in that dark spot in those children's lives. Fathers, keep shining. 
Keep standing. Keep praying. Keep being a godly man. And as you go about this day, let them serve you. Let them acknowledge you. Reap your blessings today. Receive all of your accolades today to all the fathers that are sitting under the sound of my voice this morning. I know I think my daddy was the greatest daddy in the world. He will always be my first love. He will always be great. But I have a father that sits high. And he comes even before my earthly father. Fathers, accept Christ into your life. It will make such a big difference. Happy Father's Day. Happy month of June. Be strong. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Any man can be a dad, but it takes a special person to be a father. Happy Father's Day.